What's going on guys, my name is Based on Impulse and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at 15 of the most important exotic armor pieces that you guys are going to want to get your hands on before we head into Beyond Light in just a couple of weeks. We've got 5 exotics for each class on this one, so this information will be useful to any and all of you. Since nothing about exotic armor was mentioned in this past week's TWAB, I felt like it was a good time to go ahead and make this video. I'd imagine that if there were exotic armor tweaks, they would have been in that TWAB. We know this week's should be about progression and economies, so unless something comes out in the final TWAB before Beyond Light about armor changes, you're going to want to get your hands on everything that I mentioned in this video. Keep in mind that if you're missing any of the exotics on this list, Xur sells an engram that you can open once per week on your account that is guaranteed to give you an exotic that you may be missing. Before we get into these exotics though, remember to hit that subscribe button if you guys are interested in seeing more Destiny content like this, as well as hitting the bell to get notifications whenever new videos go live. We're getting close to 2,000 subscribers here on the channel, and once we do hit that milestone, the Beyond Light giveaway winner will be dropped run, so make sure to enter that in the description. Now that I've got streams back up and running on Twitch, the plan is two to three videos per week as well as at least two streams per week. We're going to have no shortage of content for you guys, especially once Beyond Light drops, so make sure you're subscribed here and following over on the Twitch channel. I want to help you guys out as much as possible whenever I'm live on Twitch, so feel free to stop by if you need help with anything in Destiny, like exotic quests, dungeons, completions, anything like that. I'm more than happy to help you guys out if you just come by the Twitch stream and ask for some help in chat. The Beyond Light Digital Deluxe Edition giveaway is still going on as well, so make sure to enter using the link in the description. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Titans, we're going to look at your exotics first. We're going to start off with the Titan exotic that I personally use probably more than just about any other one in the game, and that is the Lion Rampant Exotic Leg Armor. This armor piece's unique perk is called Jump Jets, which will provide additional air maneuverability and enable accurate hip fire while you're in the air during your lift jump. This exotic gives you a passive boost on every Titan subclass by just making your jump significantly better. This is my go-to Titan exotic in PvE, and I really like to pair it with the Ward of Dawn tree on the Defender subclass. The main reason for this is because with the Ward of Dawn tree, there really aren't any exotics that you can use that will substantially boost your abilities on that specific tree. I find the neutral game exotics to be the best choice for pairing with Ward of Dawn. These boots also give you the ability to Titan fly with a sword, which can be really useful for navigating or just all out skipping jumping puzzles like in the Whisper mission. The next exotic we've got here on the list is the Actium War Rig exotic chest piece with the exotic perk Auto Loading Link, which will continuously reload your auto rifles and machine guns while you have them equipped. This isn't a flashy exotic by any means, but it can make you an absolute monster for DPS when paired with the exotic heavy machine gun Xenophage. You can fire all of your Xenophage shots without reloading once, even if you're using double machine gun reserves on your armor. This makes the gun even better than it already is, since it's basically like having pre nerf Lunafaction boots on at all times during damage phases. This thing is definitely worth getting your hands on, and Xenophage is as well, even though this video isn't really about weapons, the combo of Actium War Rig and Xenophage is really just too good to pass up on. Next up, we have the Dune Marcher's Exotic Leg Armor. These things are crazy for ad clearing right now, especially when you pair them with the Thunder Crash Tree's Death from Above melee ability. This exotic will increase your sprint speed, as well as building up a charge while sprinting, which will give you chain lightning damage on melee hits. This chain lightning has a 20 meter radius, so jumping into a crowd of enemies with this exotic and meleeing one of them will wipe out just about all of them. The chain lightning also seems to have some form of a stun effect if the damage doesn't outright kill the enemy, so that can also be useful if you're doing content you might be under leveled for in the early days of Beyond Light. Dune Marchers have become a popular PvP choice as well, especially in Trials or Survival where the enemy team tends to want to group up. Make sure to get your hands on these as they're not only pretty strong, but they're also just pretty fun to use. The final Titan exotic on our list here is going to be the Syntheseps Exotic Arms Armor. This is an exotic that I would consider to be more of a PvP choice rather than a PvE choice, but it's still very solid. Syntheseps will give you a crazy melee lunge range, as well as giving you a boost to melee and super damage while surrounded. The perk doesn't explain well what being surrounded means, but if it works like the weapon perk surrounded, I would assume you need three or more enemies in close proximity to you for it to work. This armor piece is great when paired with bottom tree hammers for PvP. If you missed my video about bottom tree hammers being really underrated, you can check that out by clicking the card at the top right of the screen. But the reason this exotic is so good when paired with that tree is because of the melee ability and perks on that subclass. The melee does AoE damage when you hit a target, so if enemies are grouped up together in PvP, hitting one of them will cause all of them to have a burn effect applied to them. Killing a burning enemy will drop a sunspot, which will deal more damage to those surrounding enemies, and you can utilize your increased melee damage from Syntheseps to get easy cleanup kills. I've gotten so many 3 or 4 man feeds just by using this build, it's absolutely crazy. TLDR on winning as a Titan and Crucible, use a shotgun, Syntheseps, and bottom tree hammers, easy clap. 
If you like playing on Titan for PvP, you want to get these as soon as you can. Moving on next up, we've got the Hunters. Unfortunately for you all, a lot of your previously S-tier exotics have been nerfed, but we've still got a handful that are worth pointing out and getting your hands on. First up, obviously, is the Celestial Nighthawk Exotic Helmet. This helmet turns your Golden Gun into one insanely powerful shot and makes Golden Gun literally the best DPS super in the game, and that's not an exaggeration. It's really important to remember, though, that to get the full benefits of Celestial Nighthawk, you should be running Bottom Tree Golden Gun for precision damage, because Top Tree Golden Gun cannot deal precision damage even with this helmet equipped. You'll lose out on a lot of damage if you run this exotic with top tree. Not a whole lot to say about this one, but if you're doing raids or strikes or pretty much anything with bosses, you need this if you're a hunter. Next we have Stompies, aka we are at a jumping puzzle, let me switch, the exotic. Hunter jumps are pretty crap by themselves, I think we all know that. Stompies basically just crank up the dial on the jump and allow you to jump higher and move faster while they are equipped. This is a great all-around exotic piece that you can use literally anywhere in the game and see some benefits. If you're struggling with a jump puzzle, Toss them on and it's way easier. You got pesky AC-130 Warlocks and Crucible, put these on and jump in their face and shotgun them. These are basically the Lion Rampants of the Hunter exotics and are absolutely worth getting your hands on. This next exotic definitely can be frustrating to play against, but it's such a great exotic that I really can't leave it out of the list. The Wormhusk Crown exotic helmet gives you some health and shields back every time you dodge. This exotic paired with a high mobility build on your Hunter basically means you get free health back all the time for doing essentially nothing. This is definitely helpful in higher level content, although there is a better choice that we'll get to in just a second, and it is a top tier pick if you are playing in Crucible. If you're weak after you got body shot from across the map by a sniper, or some cursed thralls just blew up and almost killed you, all you gotta do is dodge and you get a significant chunk of your health back. Zur was actually selling a god roll of this a couple weeks ago that I was able to get my hands on, so if you picked it up when he was selling it, I believe it was two weeks ago, you've already got a really good worm husk on you. But if you're still missing it, just swing by Zur this week and make sure to grab that engram on your hunter, because this is a really good exotic that you should absolutely have in your inventory. Next we have an exotic that did get reined in a little bit, but is still really good, and that's the Liar's Handshake Exotic Arms Armor. This armor's perk is called Cross Counter and states that using your arc melee ability or taking melee damage will give you bonus damage on your next melee hit. I don't want to bore you with tribute hall numbers and testing and all that because there's a lot of numbers and this video is already getting kind of long, but trust me when I say that this thing is very good. Toss on your favorite one-two punch shotgun as well as top tree arc strider for combination blow, and this thing can be absolutely fantastic. Just get your combination blow up to times three, shoot that mini boss with your shotgun, and follow up with two quick melees for crazy damage. There's certainly better all around options for hunters, but if you're not fighting a raid boss or doing a GM Nightfall, or just want to use something that's fun, this thing is a lot of fun to mess around with. I use it a lot during the first encounter of Crown of Sorrow, actually, just to make dealing with the knights easier, and it's basically free because of how significant the damage bonus is. And now for our final Hunter Exotic, which is your top choice for things like high-level Nightfalls, the 6th Coyote Exotic Chest Piece. This exotic is very simple. It gives you an extra dodge charge. That's it. But the reason that this is so good is because you can run Bottom Tree Tether and very easily get your Vanish and Smoke Charge back all the time with a melee dodge. Throw a high mobility stat into the mix as well, and you should always have an Invis Charge at the ready. This is crucial for high level content like Nightfalls if you need to get a quick res off, or if you're trying to get into a better position to take out champions. If you are a hunter looking to get into higher end PvE content, you're going to want to get your hands on this thing as soon as possible to make you and your team's lives way easier when you're in those activities. Last but certainly not least, because we are the best class in the game, Warlocks, it is your turn. First on the list is the Warlock Exotic I wear literally 99% of the time that I'm playing the game, and that is the Transversive Steps. These boots increase your sprint speed as well as reloading your currently held weapon after sprinting for a short time. This exotic is a phenomenal passive exotic that works wonders on every Warlock subclass, but performs especially well on Top Tree Dawnblade due to how insanely fast it allows you to move if you pair that boosted sprint speed with Icarus Dashes. I can't say good enough things about this exotic, I literally run it in every activity I do on Warlock, Strikes, Crucible, Nightfalls. I even ran this in the low light garden that my day one team ran on Sunday for practice. Shameless plug, I stream that live on Twitch, so make sure to follow me there, link in description. Moving on though, next up we have the Luna Faction Boots. Even though they got their auto reloading perk removed in favor of 
of max reload speed, these things are still one of the best exotics to run for a warlock in raids during boss fights. Specifically in raids though, because we have another exotic here in just a minute that's arguably better for the well class just about everywhere else. If you for some reason also run Empowering Rift, these boots will also give your weapons more range while standing in an Empowering Rift. I really don't know anyone that uses Empowering over Healing, but if you do, there's a bonus there for you. The main reason to run these though is for that reload speed boost in your well as it will allow your team to do much better DPS than if they don't have it. Xenophage is one of the best damage weapons right now even though it does have a super slow reload speed so these boots help out with that and make Xenophage's DPS even better. If you run Warlock and want to get into raiding, or you're starting to raid and you need something good to help your team out, you need these boots 100%. Next up we have yet another pair of exotic boots, and that is the Geomag Stabilizers. These boots will extend the duration of your Chaos Reach while dealing damage to enemies, so it's great for bosses, and sprinting while almost full on Super Energy will allow you to top off your charge. Since you can deactivate Chaos Reach at any point during the Super to retain some Super Energy, this exotic allows you to have a high damaging Super available extremely often. The bonus duration that you get off the Super, if you use all of it though, is almost doubled, so using this for damaging a strike boss or something like that is actually very strong. Chaos Reach is arguably the best arc super for Warlocks at the moment, so having an exotic on hand that makes that super even better is a no-brainer. Next up we have finally something that's not boots, and that is the Phoenix Protocol exotic chest piece. Getting kills in your Well of Radiance while wearing this exotic will return super energy, and you cap out at about two-thirds to three-quarters of your super energy returned. This armor piece allows you to absolutely spam Well of Radiance, so this exotic is a must-have since Well is really one of the best supers in the game right now. This is also a top-tier pick for high-level content, as it allows you to have your Well available to protect you and your team much more often. Honestly, this exotic is a little too good, so I wouldn't be surprised if it does see a little bit of a tweak before Beyond Light or during it, but it's definitely worth getting your hands on and taking advantage of before then. Now for the final Warlock exotic as well as the final exotic in the video, we have the Nezerax Sin Exotic Helmet. This helmet's exotic perk states that void damage kills increase ability recharge rate. This has always been a solid option due to the Recluse meta, but now Recluse is being sunset. Is this thing still going to be good? Well, yes, not to worry though, because the Dawning Hunger has stepped in as its serviceable replacement. The absolute best setup to pair with this helmet going into Beyond Light would be a Gnawing Hunger and the Devour Tree on Voidwalker. This combination allows you to essentially never die, since you always have a grenade charge available to reproc Devour if you lose it. This can still be a solid choice on any subclass though, as getting kills with a Void Weapon will increase your recharge rate on any subclass at all, it does not have to be a Void subclass. Of course, it's most effective with a Void subclass, since you can use utilize your abilities to reproc the exotic perk, but a solid void weapon on the other two subclasses will work well too. Hot swapping to this exotic when you need ability recharge is also a really solid option if you're already running some void weapons, so make sure to get your hands on this exotic, it's one of my personal favorites. And there you have it guys, 15 exotic armor pieces you need to get your hands on no matter what content you plan on doing in the game. For the question of the day, I want to know what your favorite exotic armor piece is in Destiny, for whatever reason, the looks, the function, maybe it's just a meme to use it, looking at UA on safe. Drop it in the comments. Mine is easily, like I said earlier, transverse of steps. I run it 24-7 because of the functionality, not to mention that the Vex ornament for them is just one of the sexiest ornaments in the game. Remember to check out my Twitter, Twitch, and Discord links in the description as well as entering that Beyond Light giveaway. We're drawing the winner once we hit 2,000 subs on the channel, and at the time of making this video, we are only 74 subs away. So make sure to enter and hit that subscribe button so we can get that digital deluxe edition into one of you all's hands very soon. If you found the video helpful, leaving a like as well as sharing this video with your friends would be very very much appreciated. Sharing the video is one of the best ways that you guys can help support the channel, so I'd really appreciate it if you guys could send this to any of your friends who you think might find it useful. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see all of you guys in the next video.